Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Deborah Carr and Van Heflin in Vacation from Marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. From earliest childhood, I remember, as I'm sure you do, that most romantic stories ended with a phrase, and so they were married and lived happily ever after. I accepted that conclusion without doubt. For it's only in our more mature years that we realize married life is not so simple. Uh, take tonight's play, for example, metro goldwyn Mayer's hit release, Vacation from Marriage which probes the marriage problem with results both entertaining and delightful. And as a result, won the Academy Award as the best original screen story of the year. It calls for great stars, and we have them. First, one of England's most sought-after players, Deborah Carr, in her original screen role. And one of America's most popular young stars, Van Heflin. Sociologists tell us there are many reasons for marital rift and one that is far from uncommon, on the wife's side at least, is neglect of personal charm and glamorous appearance. So you'll forgive me if I seize on that to say a word for Lux Soap, especially to you prospective June brides. May I suggest you let Lux Soap Care help keep that smooth and glamorous complexion, and in that way, make certain that your uh, husband's-to-be will never entertain the thought of... Uh, even the briefest vacation from marriage. Here's the curtain for Act One, starring Deborah Carr as Kathy and Van Heflin as Robert. It may seem to have happened ages ago, but it was really only a few years back that our story of Kathy and Robert Wilson started. To be exact, on a gloomy spring morning in London, 1940. It is exactly ten minutes to eight. I'm just finished dressing. Kathy is in the front room. She just closed the door of the flat after picking up the bottle of milk. I don't have to say her to know how she looks. She's got another head cold. <coughs> her nose is red. She hasn't done her hair. She's wearing that horrible flannel bathrobe. You'd think that on this morning, of all mornings, something, anything. She's taking my boiled egg out of the pot. The tea is on the table. In just four seconds, she'll make the momentous announcement that breakfast is ready. One, two, three, four. Cubbing, Robert? Your egg's out, dear. <clears throat> you see what I mean? Tonight, Robert is leaving me. He's, he's going to war. In any man's life, that, that's such an important event. But Robert, he just sits there finishing his tea. In a moment, he'll get to his feet, and automatically his hand will go out for the umbrella that I shall hand him. I wonder what Robert would do if I should not hand him his umbrella, if I put a raw oyster in his hand instead or a hot potato. I wonder, really, would he be aware of it? And then he'll pick up his briefcase and he'll tap the barometer on the wall as he taps it every blessed morning to assure himself the needle has registered correctly. And then Kathy. he'll... Kathy! Kathy! Oh. oh, yes, dear. When I come home from the office tonight... Your you'll... bags, yes, dear. I'll have all your things packed and ready. Your umbrella. Thank you. Here, Robert, your tonic. I don't need tonic. Now, you know it helps you when you're upset. I'm not upset. I'm perfectly confident, perfectly. <clears throat> oh, well. Well, goodbye, Kathy. Oh, oh, you'd better not kiss me, dear. You'll catch by cold. Very well, then. Ram, this says rain. Goodbye, dear. <sighs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Wilson. Be oh, yeah, yes, Mr. Staines. Mr. Hargrove will see you now. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. All employees volunteering for His Majesty's service will receive from Hargrove and Company the difference between his salary and his service yes, pay. That's very kind of Mr. Hargrove, isn't it? Uh, providing said employee has been with the company five years or longer. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Now, this is what you've got to say to him, Mr. Hargrove. I've served the company devotedly for five years. All but eight weeks, Mr. Hargrove. So I hope that you'll make an exception in my favor as regards to making up the salary. If you'd... Oh, oh thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Hargrove. I can't tell you how very... And so, you see, Wilson, since you were eight weeks short of five years, we, uh, well... There's not much we can do about it now, is there? Mr. Hargrove, I... Uh, yes, I've I served were the to company make an exception in your years. case, it would naturally mean, well, you do see what I mean, don't you? Yes, I do, sir, but Good I do think lad. that in this... Extremely sorry to lose you, Wilson, but with your sane point of view, you're bound to get on, even in the army. No, it's the Navy, sir. Uh, the Navy. Oh, oh, yes, well, your job will be waiting if you come back, uh, when you come back. Come and uh, see us, Wilson, when you're on leave. Yes, yes, sir, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Why are you walking upstairs so slowly? You afraid to tell Kathy what Hargrove said? She won't eat you, you know. Tonight's the night, eh, hey, Mr. What? Wilson? Oh, uh, Mrs. Hemmings, yes, that's that's right. You give old Isla, you know what, for <laughs> well, me. I'll certainly try, Mrs. Hemmings. Now, all you've got to do is to give Kathy a great big hug and say, Now, look, old lady, or sweetheart, or what have you. Now, look. Hargrove turned me down, but supposing he did. After all, there's 97 pounds 10 in the bank. Well, I'm going into the Navy tonight. So put on your bonnet and we'll blow the yard 7 pounds 10. Dinner and a bottle of champagne. Robert? Uh, <clears throat> yes, dear? You're early, dear. Uh, Kathy, I didn't get it. Uh, he wouldn't. Mr. Hargrove. Oh, Robert, how bead. Yeah, well, rules are rule. I'm sorry. Oh, well, never mind. We've saved nearly a hundred pounds. Well, dinner will be ready in a jiff. Don't have much time if you've got to be at the station at night. Well, about dinner, I, I, I thought Did that... Did you say something, dear? Uh, no, 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 Kathy. Nothing important. Not much more time, Kathy. I, I put some sandwiches in your case, Robert. Top left-hand corner. Oh, thank you. And thank you for the sponge bag. That's just lovely. I thought it would be nice for your shaving things. Well, oh, the, the, the insurance policy. That's in the desk. The key's under the clock. Now, I think you'd better wind that every day. Robert, if the worst comes to the worst, I could always get a job. Oh, no, Kathy. Now, that's the last thing I want you to do. You know how strongly I feel about that. Oh. Just as you say, All Robert. Right, mates. On the train. All right, On the train. Goodbye, Kathy. Oh, goodbye, Robert. Oh, oh, I hope you don't catch my cold and take care of yourself. Yes, I shall. I shall. Oh, goodbye, Kathy. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Robert. Goodbye. <laughs> Wilson, what else does he write? He's at sea now, Mrs. Hebbig. Robert's at sea and... Oh, no. No. Hey, what's up, girl? His moustache, Robert's moustache. He shaved it off. Oh, he must look so funny without his moustache. Make him look younger anyway. Oh, he didn't want to look younger. That's why he grew it in the first place. Well, I must answer this right away and tell him my big news. He'll be so... Oh, the ocean... Oh, I wonder how he's standing it, Mrs. Hemming. He's got such a delicate stomach. Well, how are you doing up here in the crow's nest, Robbie boy? Oh, don't, don't. Uh... I'm seasick, are you? Well, what are you at? Well, your watch is up, mate. I come to relieve you. Anything to report? See anything up there? No. No, here, here the, the doctor is. 
Hurry down to the galley, Bob. Lovely grub tonight. Or can be. Oh, no. You look a little green, mighty. Ain't you going to eat your lovely grub? No. No, you, you take it. You eat it, please. You're just going to pull out that letter and read it again. You see? I told you he would. Oh, you must know that letter by heart, Bob. What do you keep reading it for? It's Kathy. You don't say. My wife. She's joined the Wrens. <laughs> What do you want? Oh, excuse me. Is this Dissard Hut 3? This is it. Pick out your bunk. Oh, thank you. That one is mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the chief petty officer said Eddie bed in Dissard Hut 3. She said nothing of the kind. Oh, but I assure you she did. She did not say bed in Nissen Hut 3. She said any bunk in the cabin. Now stow your kit. Oh, mayn't I leave it on the floor? Deck, girl, deck. You're in the Navy. It's the deck. This is the cabin. What's your name? Mrs. Wilson. And what have you done with him? Who? The fortunate Mr. Wilson. Oh, he's at sea. That'll teach him. <coughs> you... You've got a cold. Go straight to nurse. As senior rating in this cabin, I won't have anyone scattering germs. Well, I can't help having a cold. Of course you can. Proper diet, fresh air. I think you're being extremely rude. Am I? It's horrid being new, isn't it? But we're not too bad. What's your name? Clayton. Dizzy Clayton. Here, have a cigarette. Oh, no, thank you. My husband doesn't like me to. Do, do, do you think there's somewhere where I could post this letter? Hmm, come with me. Oh, thank you. Oh, now, wait. You can't go out looking like that. Your hat. Not down over your ears. Like, like this, see? Oh, 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 I, I really don't think I could... And here, put on some lipstick. Oh, I never use lipstick. My husband doesn't like me to. Oh, well, then. You must never use it. Never. Well, maybe just a touch. I'd... Is this better? Hmm. You'll do. Look lively now and don't drag. When we go down the street in this uniform, we're on our way someplace. Just to mail a letter. A cigarette that bears a lipstick's traces. An airline ticket to romantic uh, places. Get alive up there! And kicking! See anything? Yes! Yeah, what? A lot of sea here, oh. binoculars. Hey! Oh, I see the convoy still out there. I had a bit of trouble with that Greek over there. She seems to want to go off on her own. The old man just gave her the devil. Hey, what's for grub? Highly original dish known as cold beef ash. Oh, I'm hungry as a horse. Ah, good old corned beef hash. Yeah, it's old, all right. Well, I'm going to write a letter to my missus. I didn't know as you was married. Hardly know it myself, Stripey. One day for a honeymoon. Ah, funny things, honeymoons. I had four. But what I say is you can't judge a marriage by a honeymoon. Now, my first was a bit light-hearted. Ah, we had a grand five days, though. <laughs> Never out of a pub till we was pushed. What happened to her? Oh, I don't know. Just lost touch. How about your honeymoon, Bob? My wife and I, gentlemen, went to Clacton on Sea in August on the Tan. Ha! Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to <laughs> my. And furthermore, when we make port next week. If we make port next and week. And the fighting females known as the Wrens give Kathy her leave. If they give it a leave, we possibly might go to Clacton on the Sea again. Ha! By the sea, by the by sea, sea, by the beautiful sea, you and I, you and I. You and I. <laughs> Mrs. Emin, you at home, Mrs. Emin? Who is it? Mr. Potter, air raid warden. Oh, what's up now? Showing a light, am I? Telegrams, just come through on the phone. You had a couple of tenants here, a Mr. and Mrs. Wilson? Yes, they'll both be home tomorrow on leave, too. Yeah, not much, they will. Mr. Wilson telegram said for you to tell his wife all leaves cancelled. Oh, dear, his poor missus. And his poor missus telegram, if Mr. Wilson arrives... Please explain all leaves cancelled. Oh. There, now, I've done me duty, Mrs. H. They do have such bad luck with their leaves. 
She hasn't seen him for over a year now. She's a wren. And he's in the Navy, eh? Oh, well, they take all sorts these days. Say, Robbie. Huh? How do you spell nostalgia? N-O-S-T-A-L-G-I-E. Nostalgia? What's that? It's what I think I feel when I'm away from my wife. Well, I gotta say something, ain't I? It's not so easy when you ain't seen your missus in Lord knows when. You know, I once clean forgot what my wife even looked like. Couldn't remember her face. Nothing. She was a good wife too, Bob, in many ways. But when we was apart, she she sort of faded out. Sort sort of out of focus? Yes, that's it. Misty like. Can you see your wife, Bob? What? Oh, well, of course I can. Good looker as she make? Well, no, she's an ordinary girl, simple, uncomplicated. Quite dependable sort of a person. Yes, that, that's the strong point about Kathy. Thoroughly dependable. Here, show him a photo, Bob. All right. Here. Here's my wife. Oh, yes. Nice, quiet little number, I should say. You'll know where you are with her when we have shore leave. When we get shore leave, that's what sort of a joke is that? Do you realize it's been nearly... Two years. I haven't seen Kathy in nearly two years. Just be thankful you got a missus like that. They're always the best in the long run, even if they ain't much fun. Now, I always... Hey, and we're for it. Metal fish. Metal fish. Metal fish. Metal fish. Metal fish. About Robert Wilson, Doctor, do you have any special orders? Wilson? He was on that destroyer, sir, the one that was torpedoed. Oh, oh, yes. Well, the cut on his head is nothing. One can't tell about his hands yet. Just keep him quiet. Yes, Doctor. <coughs> How is he, nurse? He'll be all right, Scotty. You know, they tell me he rode for five days with his hands half roasted. That's something of a man. Did you notify his family? He has a wife. He asked me not to write. Oh, that's funny. I wonder why. Probably doesn't want her to worry. Oh, that could be it, couldn't it? Now but get hand, back you... to bed, Scotty. You're still my patient, too. All right, girls, all right. I know we all had a wonderful time at the party tonight, but in two minutes it's lights out. Oh, Dizzy, I wanted to ride Robert. At this hour? I sort of thought I ought to. Did you have a good time tonight, Kathy? Oh, yes. And it's because I had a good time. It doesn't seem fair to Robert somehow. Why? Is he so mad about dancing? Oh, he hates it. And while I was dancing tonight with your cousin, I suddenly realized how he hates it. See what I mean? No. I'd rather like to meet your Robert. Oh, I don't think you'd get on. He's never done anything or gone anywhere exciting like your cousin. Stop calling him my cousin. His name's Richard. He's had such a wonderful life, hasn't he? Robert worked in the city, didn't he? Hmm. Bookkeeper. Richard told me all about the docks at Hong Kong, why he practically built them, didn't he? Kathy, how old is Robert? Oh, about Richard's age. Imagine he's learning to speak Chinese. Who, Robert? Robert, don't be silly. Richard. Kathy, had he charm when you met him? Who, Richard? Robert. Oh. Well, he... He was very kind. Oh. Sorry, girls, lights out. Dizzy, do you know, tonight was the first time I danced since I married Robert. Hmm. It's a wonderful sensation to dance with the right man. With whom? Oh, I don't know. The right man. In a moment, we'll continue with Vacation from Marriage, starring Deborah Carr and Van Heflin. Meanwhile, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. What's on the calendar tonight, Libby? Oh, you might like to hear about a party I attended recently, Mr. Keeley. The host and hostess were dressed as Indians. Oh, a costume party. Well, not the usual kind. It was given on the set the final day of shooting Black Gold, a lied artist's new picture. Anthony Quinn and his wife, Catherine DeMille, play the leading roles, and they still wore their Indian costumes and makeup. I hear there are some splendid outdoor shots in the picture. Oh, yes. The Mexican border town scenes are exquisite in color. And anyone who loves horses will see some beauties in black gold. Catherine DeMille said she and her husband, along with Elise Knox, 
really enjoyed making the picture. But now all they can think of is the short vacation cruise they've planned. Picture players really earn their vacations, don't they? I should say so. Catherine told me she and Tony just want to go where they can rest and be completely unnoticed. Though I doubt if she'll be able to achieve it. Why not, Libby? Well, Catherine has the vivid kind of beauty that always attracts attention. Flashing black eyes, heavy, dark hair, and a really gorgeous complexion. You know the kind I mean, Mr. Kennedy. I'll say I do, Libby. A dramatic luxe complexion. That's just what it is. Like nine out of ten other Hollywood stars, Catherine DeMille is a luxe girl. She told me she never neglects her luxe toilet soap beauty facials. And when you see her, you know what an effective care those facials can be. Perhaps you'll tell us how quick and easy they are, too, Libby. Well, here's what Catherine DeMille does. Smooths the fragrant lather well into her skin, rinses first with warm water, then cold, and pats her face dry with a soft towel. Takes just a few moments, but it's a daily care that works. Lux Soap Beauty facials do make complexions lovelier. Skin specialists proved that. In recent tests, three out of four complexions improved in a short time. Screen stars tell me they're thrilled with the fresh new beauty this active lather care gives their skin. Thanks, Libby. Here's a suggestion for the ladies in our audience. Why not try this complexion care that screen stars recommend? Discover for yourself why Lux Toilet Soap is Hollywood's own beauty soap. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act two of Vacation from Marriage, starring Deborah Carr as Kathy and Van Heflin as Robert. In the two years they've been separated, a remarkable transformation has come over mouse-like Robert Wilson and the, well, somewhat dowdy Kathy Wilson. It's almost as though the Navy had issued them shiny new personalities along with their uniforms. Take, for example, Kathy, who, ignorant of Robert's injuries, is enjoying a few hours' leave with Dizzy's handsome cousin, Richard. Oh, Richard, look. What a wonderful view of the harbor. Guarded by ships and all our sea, our own. Oh, I do envy you, Richard. You've read everything, traveled everywhere. I, I've never really traveled. Why don't you after the war? Oh, you don't know my husband. Don't I? What are you doing? Making a sketch of you. No, no, don't look till I've finished. About your husband, I should say he's about five feet eight. Six feet? When he stands up. Hmm, the weedy type. Oh, no, no. He stoops he's... a little, too. Winds the clock before he goes to the office, doesn't drink, likes bicycling, and kept white mice as a small boy. I think you're being perfectly hateful. Keep still. My husband's devoted to me, and I am to him. He can't talk intellectually and, and spitefully like... Like me. And I'm not saying he's Clark Gable, but he, he is dependable. It's impossible to sketch if you insist on chattering. Well, it's not too bad, though. Here. Oh, it's, it's not at all like me. Well, who else? I don't know. It's very lovely, it's but... It's exactly like you. I didn't know you could draw. No one ever thinks a naval architect can. May I have it? I want to send it to Robert. Mm -mm. You wouldn't know who it was, either. Kathy, I had so much to say to you this afternoon. What about? Never mind. There's been entirely too much talk of Robert. Come on, let's get back to town. I've some spare time, Mr. Wilson. If you'd like any letters written. No, no letters, miss. Doctor says I'll be able to use my own hands in a day or two. But there must be a girl somewhere. It's only my wife. Only your wife? Well, I mean, a day sooner or later she won't mind. Is she pretty? Nice looking. Yeah, at least I thought she was when I first met her. Oh, when was that? At school. I wanted to be an engineer. You know, bridges, roads, <laughs> India. One sort of dreams, you know. Yes. Yes, I know. I went to the polytechnic evening classes. And she was studying shorthand. We fell in love, married, and that was that. I see. I... <laughs> Sorry, I seem to be pouring out the entire story of my life. People always unburden to their nurses when they're getting better. Well, I promised Scotty I'd wheel him about for a while. Wait. Uh, what's your first name? Lena. 
Elena, look. I'll be leaving in a few days. Before I go, would you... Well, well I mean, could, could we sort of uh, have a final evening? I'd love to. You would? Of course. You're my most charming patient. Or didn't you know? Dance, Elena? Oh, let's sit a while longer, Robert. Gordon, you know, I, I've never met anyone like you before. Your kind just, just doesn't uh, live in my world. You keep saying that. What exactly is your world? All right, I'll tell you. 87 Lennox Garden, top flat from 6.30 p.m. until 8.30 a.m. Hargrove and Company from 9 a.m. until 6. A long desk piled with ledges with Mr. Bushwick on my left and Mr. Wiser on my right. That's my world. Except for two weeks, once a year, Clacton on Sea. Poor Clacton on Sea. What's wrong with it? Nothing, but when you move a garden roller off a patch of grass, you know how yellow and flat the grass looks. Well, that's exactly how we look lying on the beach, getting a year's supply of sunshine in two weeks. Don't make it sound so dreadful. Look, when you do the same job day in and day out, year after year, well, the groove is very comfortable, Elena. Yeah, so is the grave, they say. Well, for the time being, the war's got me out of the groove. But that's what I've got to go back to. <laughs> do I sound sorry for myself? Yes, you do grass under the roller. My husband used to say that grass is the toughest thing in the universe. I didn't know you were married. My husband used to say that to him, the city of London was the most romantic spot on earth. You may have heard of him, Allingham the Explorer. Allingham? Well, of course I know him. Well, I, I mean, he's... Uh, well, everyone knows him. He was once a clerk in a London office, too. Where is he now? He was... Killed in Burma six months ago. Oh, I, I... I... I'd better go now, Robert. No, you stay here. I'd rather go alone. W will I see you in the morning? No. I'd like to kiss you goodbye, Robert. Goodbye, Robert. Elena. <clears throat> Waiter. We meet you. Is there any place nearby where I can send a cable? Uh, across the street, monsieur. A post office. Thank you very much. Do you mind if I have another drink, Richard? Waiter. Two more, please. One more drink, Cathy, and I think I'll be able to tell you. Tell me what? That I'm in love with you. No, Richard. You're fond of me, just as I'm fond of you, but you're not in love with me. Anyway, you told me you'd never fall in love again. I didn't want to, Cathy, but I have. Suddenly I realize I'm two persons, and I, uh, I used to be one. I'm two persons, and I don't like either of them. At least, I don't like the one you like. Cathy, listen to No, me. no, I, I can't. Richard, I got a cable an hour ago from Tunis. Robert's coming home. I've been given leave. When? Tonight. I'm leaving tonight for London. Dizzy's coming with me. You needn't look as though you're going to a funeral, Cathy. Oh, Dizzy, it's just this stuffy old train. Ten days leave with your husband after three years. You should be jumping for joy. Should I? Out with it, Cathy. What's the matter? You've just said what's the matter. Three years. I haven't seen Robert in nearly three years. It's a lifetime, Scotty. Three years. Mind you, I was fond of Kathy and she was fond of me, but the one thing we had in common, our home, well, it... it it was pre-war. Mm, and you don't want to go back to it, eh? I do not, but she will. It, I, I'm her entire life. Kathy has never once stood on her own two feet. What on earth she's doing in the range is beyond me. Kathy and her colds. Well, there, was, there were times, uh, Scotty, when I'd say to myself, if she gets one more cold, only one more, I'll... 
I'll, I'll immigrate. And sometimes I'd say to myself, if I hear the click of his latch key just one more time, always on time, I'll, I'll set fire to the house. Oh, Dizzy, I don't want to have anything I oughtn't, but I just can't go back to that life again. What about Richard? Richard? He's in love with you, isn't he? Yes, I suppose so. And you? How do you feel about him? Well, I feel that whatever I feel, I must go back to Robert. Oh, Dizzy, he's such a poor, dear little man. If I weren't there to wind him up and start him off to the office every morning, he'd run down like a clockwork mouse. But under the circumstances, then, why don't you leave Kathy? Leave Kathy? Leave that helpless, blind little kitten? Why, well, I, I think for her, I plan for her. She, she exists on my vitality. Why, without me? Oh, no, I just couldn't do it, Scotty. Never. Well, go on in, Scotty. This is it. The Wilson flat. Oh, thanks, Robert. Well, maybe it's good the missus isn't home yet. Say, who's the barnacle on the mantel? That picture, don't be an ass, that's me. Oh. <laughs> Funny how photos let you down. You know, this was quite good of me at the time. Mm. Who's the lady? Kathy. Oh. Oh, well, there are no colored photographs in those days. It's a pity. I always say color helps a face. Those days, that was taken the year before the war. If a person can change that much in four years... All right, what's your answer? Well, laddie, I wouldn't like to say. Well, the answer's to clear out. It's for Kathy's own good. She's a stranger to me, and I'm a stranger to her. When I look at this picture of her, I say, I don't know you, and you don't know me. We've never met. In my picture, am I that stuffed shirt? Hmm. I see your point. Scotty, I want to be myself. And this miserable flat. They blitzed enough of London. Why couldn't they have blitzed this one, too? Ah, uh, that, that's tempting providence, Bob. Uh, by the way, you wouldn't have a nip in the house, now, would you? No, no, of course, I, I shouldn't have asked. I hope you don't mind walking, Dizzy, but I, I simply must have more time to figure this out. Oh, no. No, I don't mind. Well, here's the situation. Robert will never realize what utter strangers we really are unless I tell him. The point is, ought I to? The poor devil's home on his first leave. He's longing to see you. It's a bit hard on him, isn't it? I mean, well, he thinks everything's the same. Yes, I know, I know. But I, I simply can't resume married life without any, any preliminaries. I can't just... Oh, I... Well, don't fuss. I know what you mean. Yes, but will Robert... You s Dizzy, this is it. This is where we live. Well, go in. No. Don't be a fool. Oh, my knees are like cotton wool. Go on. Dizzy, look, there's a pub round the corner. It's the coach and horses. Would you wait for me there? I'll meet you there in an hour. That do you? Yes, that's fine. Promise? Go on up, you coward. Yes. Yes, I must... Summertime, Scotty, her face always covered with freckles. I used to. Hey, what was that? What was what? I thought I heard someone coming up the stairs. No, it was someone going down the stairs. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. For a moment, I thought it was Kathy. Oh, no, no, no. That's not her step. Nothing like it. Oh, well, she'll be along soon, I suppose, and she makes a cup of tea. Dizzy. Dizzy. Dizzy, wait for me. Wait for me. What's the matter? Dizzy, I, I simply couldn't do it. You are a coward. I was halfway up the last flight and then I bolted. Oh, I'm so ashamed. You ought to be. Well, the least you can do is telephone him. Telephone, yes, yes, of course. Oh, give me a copper, Dizzy. I'm so nervous I can hardly... Hello? Hello? Uh, hello, uh, Robert? What? Uh, Robert, it's Kathy. 
Kathy? Scotty, it's Kathy. Well, where, where are you? I'm just around the corner, Robert. I can't explain on the telephone, but I wondered if you could manage to meet me somewhere. Anywhere, the bus stop will do. On the street? But why? I, I just don't want to come back to the flat, Robert. What are you trying to tell me? I'm sorry, Robert. I'm most awfully sorry, but I don't want to come back to you at all. Hello. Hello. What? She... Uh... Well, she's, she's out of her mind. She's crazy. She wants to me to meet her at the bus stop. She says she's not coming back to me. Oh, congratulations. Look, there's a pub around the corner. I'll meet you there when I'm through with her. But if you think I'm going to let my own wife walk out on me, you can think again. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll return with Vacation from Marriage, starring Deborah Carr and Van Heflin. Were I to introduce our young guest tonight with a headline, I'd say Miss America Returns to Hollywood. Because last year, Marilyn Buford, formerly Miss Los Angeles, won first place in the famous Atlantic City Beauty Contest. Now she's pursuing a career at Metro Golden Mayor. Marilyn, is there any particular type of role you'd like to play in pictures? Oh, yes, Mr. Keeley. It happens that when I watched June Allison making her current Metro Golden Mayor picture, High Barbary, I said to myself, I'd give anything if I could someday play that kind of dramatic role and do it half as well as June Allison does. <laughs> that I can understand. Think what an inspiration she had, Mr. Keeley, playing a romantic lead opposite. Van Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> like that, eh? You know, Van does some of the finest acting of his career. When he and June are in a love story together, you, you get romance with a capital R. That talented Claude Jarman Jr. does a wonderful job of playing Van in his childhood years. Yes, High Barbary has a fine cast, and come to think of it, a very youthful one. June Allison is so charming. What a lovely, fresh look she always has, no matter how hard she's working. I imagine John Kennedy here has an opinion about that. A leading question, Mr. Keeley, and I'll answer it with a fact. We all know June Allison is a Lux girl. She is, Mr. Kennedy, and so am I. I wouldn't be without Lux toilet soap. Active lather facials do wonderful things for the complexion. Well, Miss Buford, that's quite a recommendation coming from the winner of a national beauty contest. But then, lovely women everywhere tell us Lux toilet soap is a care that really works. I'd like to remind the ladies in our audience that Lux toilet soap makes a wonderful bath soap, too. Screen stars say they like its delightful fragrance. No wonder this fine soap is Hollywood's favorite beauty care. We return you now to William Keeley. Act three of Vacation from Marriage, starring Deborah Carr as Kathy and Van Heflin as Robert. <laughs> Wartime London keeps its light out at night. And so the streets are dark and full of shadows as Robert Wilson approaches the bus stop and calls to the lonely figure waiting there. Kathy? Is that you? Hello. How are you, Robert? I'm fine. Now, what is all this about? Well, I, I thought we'd better have a talk. Well, why not come home? That's just it. To me, it isn't a home anymore. I'm sorry, Robert, I'm awfully sorry, but I told you I don't want to come back to you at all. I see. I've had time to do a great deal of thinking, and What I... about? Is there someone else? Oh, you needn't worry, Robert. I'm still a respectable married woman. Oh, well, I'm absolutely sure about that, Kathy. Well, you needn't be as sure as all that. <laughs> the trouble with me is that I have a conscience... I lie awake at night wondering if it's fair to leave you to shift helplessly. Will you please realize once and for all that I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself? Robert, you know very well I had to wait on you hand and foot. You used to lean on me for everything. Lean on you? 
And when I had the entire responsibility, but the entire responsibility for our two lives on my own miserable shoulders, I used to feel like a racehorse dragging a milk cart. A racehorse? You? A milk cart, am I? Oh, really, it's ridiculous to go on like this. Robert, I want a divorce. Have one, by all means. You mean you agree? Agree? My dear girl, by some remarkable coincidence, it's exactly what I wanted to. Well, well, I'm very much relieved. Surprised, but relieved. Well, then that's that. Now, what did we better do next? Oh, I, I suppose one gets a lawyer. No, 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 I mean right now. There's still a lot to talk over. Would you like to have some tea or lemonade or something? Yes, yes, I would rather. Coaching horses all right? Yes, that's fine. You, um, still troubled with your head colds? Nonsense. I haven't had a cold since I went away. You were sniffling like mad on the telephone. I was crying. Crying? Well, you don't say goodbye to your husband every day. You don't say hello every day, either. Do you realize I haven't seen you for three years? I can't even see you now. It's so dark. Kathy, must you just dawdle along? We're going to the coach and horses. For heaven's sakes, let's get there. Now, here's the table. Sit down, Kathy. Waiter. Yes, sir? A pink gin, please, and lemonade for the lady. I, I think I'll have a pink gin, too. Yes, ma'am. Two pink Kathy? Gin. Kathy, pink gin? Yes, Robert. You, pink gin? Well, uh, now, what were we talking about? Robert, you do look very well. Why wouldn't I? <clears throat> well, you, too. <laughs> Thank you. Now... Getting back to the divorce. Oh, don't worry about that. You sue me. I'll give you the cause. Oh, no. We'll just stick to the truth. I've deserted you. I'm sorry. No, I, it's just a bit of a slur, you know. I don't mind. It can't be helped. <clears throat> a slur on me, I mean. Oh, <clears throat> no drinks. Well, what about the furniture and the flat? Oh, blast the furniture. Sell it. Give it to Mrs. Hemmings. That flat, I hated it. You used to call it your castle. You said there was no place like home, and you I all... seem to linger in your memory as a sort of uh, broken gramophone record of Victorian proverbs. Well, <laughs> I... <laughs> Tell me, Kathy. Tell me, was I so awful? Oh, what does it matter now? No, no not a bit. <clears throat> was I? Well, you were a bit of an old maid. Old maid? You know, cut and dried, and... Then at the least excitement, you dithered. Oh, no. No, I did not dither. Cut and dried, I may have appeared on the surface. After all, I spent half my life in an extremely stuffy office and the other half in an extremely stuffy flat with the window shut tight because my wife had a perpetual cold in the nose. All right, all right. I withdraw dither. I don't suppose I was exactly a pinup girl myself. <laughs> pinup girl, you? <laughs> well, no, not exactly. But Robert, <clears throat> how could I help it? A woman's place may be the home. Oh, I'm not so sure it oh, is. Oh, yes, it is, and always will be. Only not our sort of home. Oh, Robert, I got so bored. Bored? You too? Yes. Do you remember that high wall that used to shut out our view? It was so. So flattening, Robert. Oh, how I used to envy you going down into the city every day. Envy me? There's something so romantic about the city, so exciting. It's like the center of a web. Yes, exactly like a web. You get caught in it. Oh, no, no, no. Quite the opposite. The threads run out to the ends of the earth. I used to bring home travel folders, Robert. I'd devour them. Oh, they were so wonderful. I never saw you reading travel folders. Of course not. I've... I was afraid of being sneered at. Kathy, I never sneered at you. Never. No, but you'd have thought it a slur on your old Clacton-on-Sea. My Clacton-on-Sea? I detested that place. But you always insisted on going there. Only because you said it was good for your colds. Oh, well, let's have another drink. Waiter. Now, what's happened to him? Oh, come on, Kathy. Let's go to the bar. It's going to be a struggle. Everyone's dancing. It's jam. Well, just shove them aside. The bar's over the... We could dance, too, I suppose. Oh, what? excuse me. I forgot. You never dance. Who said I don't? Oh. Robert, hmm? where did you learn to dance? Oh, around and about. One picks it up, you know. <clears throat> 
Hey, where did you learn? Oh, around and about. One picks it up, you know. Oh. <clears throat> What's the matter? Robert, would you excuse me for a moment? That girl over there, she's a friend of mine, and I... No, 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 run along. I'll be here. Hello, Dizzy. Thank you for coming. Quit work, darling. What have you done with the other one? What other one? The Nitwick. The old man of the sea. Your husband. Quiet, that is Robert. Don't be funny. Shh, Dizzy, please, here he comes. Hello. Oh, uh, Robert, this is Dizzy Clayton. Dizzy, this is Robert, my husband. Well, how are you? Shall we have a drink? What do you have? Oh, Dizzy always has a gin and wine. Well, if you go back to the table, I'll see what I can do. That's not the husband you're going to get a divorce from. Naturally. Then all I can say is you must be a poor, crazed lunatic. I don't know what you mean. Now, look here. You told me that your husband... Oh, I don't want to hear what I told you. Come along to the table. Oh, there you are, Bob. Hello, Scotty. Here, give me a hand with these drinks, will you, please? Okay. Who are they for? Over there, those two girls. Oh, boy, oh, boy. What a couple of smashers. Here, wait a second. What did you do to get rid of the wife? <laughs> did you beat her to death or something? <laughs> no. I'll take that one on the right. <laughs> the one on the right happens to be my wife. All right, now stop running and come on. <laughs> I must say, you're a peach of a dancer. Uh, you're really not Robert's wife, are you? What makes you think I'm not, Scotty? Well, after all, look at you. Why? Did Robert say there was anything wrong with me? Huh? Oh, oh, no, no. Robert couldn't say enough about you, but well, somehow or other I did not get the impression that you were a pin-up girl. Am I really? You're my idea of one. Husbands just don't think of their wives as pin-up girls, Scotty. Oh, oh, no, no. He always said how dependable you were, and you are being so delicate and, well, always having cold. So you see, well, I was rather scared of meeting you. Oh, I see, all right. I, I, I just couldn't imagine that you were so young. Oh, couldn't you? Scotty, if you don't mind, I'd rather not dance anymore. Kathy, what is the matter with you? Not a thing. Well, ever since you came back to the table, you've been... Scotty, did you tell her anything? Who? Me? He merely explained to me what a dim, dowdy, irritating frump of a woman he was expecting to meet. Uh, uh, Dizzy, let's go over to the bar. Yes, I think we'd better. That fool, that muddle-headed fool. I thought Scotty very clear and very interesting. And at last I thoroughly understand why you were so keen on a divorce. I wanted a divorce. Who asked for a divorce first? I did. But I am not going to be divorced on the grounds that I'm older than you. That I'm dull, dowdy, I sickly. never, never said anything of the sort. You'll I say never next, so I much don't as... brush my teeth if you think I'm going to stand for that sort of abuse. If you very... think I'm going to be called an old maid... So you, you are an old maid. Kathy, if you say that once more, once more, I'll wring your neck. Wring my neck. What a silly, stupid, hackneyed phrase. Robert, I've run myself for the last three years with complete efficiency. I've had nothing but respect and courtesy wherever I went. And let me tell you this, you were a fairly pleasant person once, and I was doubtful if I was doing the right thing by you. Yes, I was actually afraid of hurting your feelings, as if you had any that weren't exclusively concerned with your own swollen, overbearing, impossible ego. Have you finished? I have, and I'm going. Good night. All right, good night. Kathy, isn't this a little silly? You and I waiting a taxi on this corner, and Robert and Scotty over there on that corner. For heaven's sake, why doesn't he go home? She wants to know, for heaven's sakes, why don't you go home? And I don't want to know just where you two are going. Oh, all right, tell him. We're going to Streatham. Kathy's staying with me. We've stood here for 15 minutes. Don't you realize that no cabs will take you to Streatham at this hour? Then we'll go to a hotel. Then we'll go to a hotel. I've told you a dozen times you two girls can go to the flat. He says we can go to the flat. I wouldn't dream of going to the flat. She wouldn't dream of going to the flat? Tell her not to be a fool. He says don't be a fool. Oh, tell him to mind his own business. You heard that, I suppose. Yes, and you can tell her for the time being she's still my business. 
I will not allow my wife to wander about the streets. I am not wandering. I am waiting here until we can get a taxi. She's waiting here until we can get a taxi. All right, then we'll all wait here until she can get a taxi. And who invited you to wait over here? I am going to see you and Dizzy into a taxi cab or into the flat. I don't give a hoot in Hades what you do, but I'll not leave two girls standing on the pavement. Now, is that understood? Yes, Robert, and it's very sweet of you. And I don't mind waiting. The locality is very pleasant. <clears throat> well, it was. It was before the Blitz. What used to be here? Shops, Dizzy. Very nice little shops. Paper shop here, and then here next door was a butcher shop. Then Laundry. <clears throat> Butcher. The butcher was opposite. The butcher was next door, and next to the butcher, a greengrocer. The butcher and the greengrocer were both opposite. They were here, here on the north side of the street. The laundry was on the north side. The butcher and the greengrocer were on the opposite side. <clears throat> where is north, Scotty? Where is north? I don't care where north is. You know, if we only had a compass to convince the lady... If we could... all the compasses in the British Navy were to say that the butcher and the greengrocer were on the north side, then all the compasses in the British Navy would be wrong. The butcher and the greengrocer... Oh, grocer... shut up, Kathy. <laughs> Robert, please don't speak to me. Speak to you? I don't want to speak to you. Conceit, that's what's the matter with you. Blind, blithering conceit. You doll yourself up decently for the first time in your life, frizz out your hair like a blonde gollywog, smother your face in lipstick, and you expect me to speak to you. Good night and goodbye. There. You see, Dizzy? You see, Scotty? That's what the war can do to a man. And he used to be the kindest, gentlest, most courteous... Quarrel? Why, he never so much as raised his voice... Nobody knew but me what a darling he was, and I adored him. He was my whole life. Did you hear the things he just said to me? Yes, and now shall we go to your flat? We're all very tired. Conceit. It's not fair. And my hair isn't frizzed. Of course it isn't. Now let's get along. May I see you ladies safely home? No, thanks. It's just down the road. Goodbye, Scotty. Goodbye, Mrs. Wilson. And thank you for a very interesting and a very instructive evening. <laughs> I'll just walk, walk by myself until the sun comes up. It's worth it. For once in my life, I told her off. Blind, blithering conceit. <laughs> well, she didn't expect that. What was that she said? Overbearing, impossible ego. Yes, well, I didn't expect that either, did I? <laughs> Not that it's true, of course. Ego, well, I've never had enough ego, always thinking of others all my life. Well, from now on, I'm going to relax. I know exactly where I am and exactly where I'm going. That's your eighth cup of tea, Kathy. Oh, I just can't sleep. I can, if I'm let. Oh, I'm sorry, Dizzy. But you see, meeting him like that, it, it reminded me of when we used to meet outside the Polytechnic. I was going to be a typist. I'd watched him for a long time, but we never spoke. Then one day I was having something to eat before class, and he came in. There was no room at any of the other tables, so he came up and said, uh, Would you mind awfully if... And I said, Of course not. And then he knocked over my tumbler of milk and was awfully upset. Of course it was upset if he knocked it over. I mean, Robert was upset. He would order me another. And then he said, Haven't I seen you in the Spanish class? And I said, Yes. Lennox Gardens. Well, there it is, old boy. There's where you wasted six wonderful years of your life. Now, oh, look, there's a light on up there. Now, why isn't Kathy asleep? How can she expect to... Well, of course, go upstairs. You've got to pick up your bag sometime. What do you care what time it is? Now, just remember one thing. Don't weaken... A quiet, dignified entrance. Perhaps a charming, distant smile. It's remarkable, though. It's remarkable how much a human being can change in three years. What a funny little thing Kathy used to be. 
And you gave her the best years of your life. But were they the best? You know, you used to puff like an engine clattering up these stairs. Now you're not at, out of breath at all, are you? At least the war's done that for you. Well, come now. There's the door. And don't forget, be firm, be distant, and be determined. Hmm. Hmm. Where is she? Oh, well, asleep, that's where she is. She simply forgot to put out the light. Well, there's your luggage. Pick it up and get out before you happen oh. to... <clears throat> oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I... I thought I was being very quiet. It's quite all right. I was just sitting up here, looking out of the window. I, I just came for my things. Shh, shh, Dizzy's asleep in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Look out of the window, Robert. Do you remember those high walls that used to make this room so dark? Why, they've disappeared, haven't they? Mm, blitzed. Well, you've certainly got the view of the city that you've always wanted. Miles and miles of it. But, oh, Robert, the desolation. Poor old London. Well, we've just got to build it up again, that's all. It'll take years and years. What does that matter? We're young. Hello, Kathy. Robert. Oh, darling. Welcome home. And so they lived happily ever after. And to that happy ending, we not add another happy ending of our own as we bring Deborah Carr and Van Heflin back for the curtain call. Deborah, I'm sure I speak for our entire audience in welcoming you to this theater and to American radio in general. Thank you, Bill. It's really quite an experience to say hello to 30 million listeners. Well, Deborah, I'm sure that they'd like to say hello right back. And I'm also sure they're eager to see you on the screen again in metro golden Mayor's version of The Hucksters. Tell me, how did you like working with uh, Clark Gable, Deborah? Well, all I can say is I enjoyed it as much as working with Van Heflin in tonight's play, and that's a great <laughs> <No>. deal. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely put, Deborah. And now that you've been in Hollywood a while, uh, how do you like the life here? Well, Bill, I'm still amazed at the many luxuries and conveniences that people have compared with the way things are in England. When you uh, speak of luxuries, do you mean like um, uh, Lux soap, perhaps? Indeed I do. <laughs> because I can remember how I used to receive my Lux soap in England from kind friends who'd send it to me. And now I follow that example and I include my favorite soap, which is Lux, of course, in packages I send to friends in England. And I'm sure they appreciate both your good taste and your generosity. Then I understand you're going to replace Bob Hope this summer with your own radio show. Yes, that's right, Bill. While Bob Hope vacations, I'll introduce a new detective series based on the character of Philip Marlowe, Raymond Chandler's famous Private Eye. Private Eye? Yeah, that's right. The kind of a detective who makes it harder and harder for crooks to make an honest living. <laughs> <laughs> well, Van, it surely looks as if Bob Hope and Pepsodent have picked a winner for the summer. And speaking of winners... We have a real thrill in store for our audience next week. Oh, sounds exciting, Bill. And it is, Deborah. Because if we were to take a poll of our audience on the performer they'd like most to hear, I'm sure millions would choose next Monday's star. A man who so deservedly gained the reputation of the world's greatest entertainer. Al Jolson. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Well, you, you really hit the jackpot, Bill. In what play? A play that was not only a great Broadway success but one that made history on the screen as the first talking picture ever produced. It's Samson Rapelson's great dramatic hit, The Jazz Singer, in which we'll hear many of Al's most popular songs. And with Al, we present Gail Patrick and an all-star cast. That ought to pack the theater, Bill, and I'm sure we'll all be listening. Good night. Good, Good night, night and many, many thanks. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening 
when the Lux Radio Theater presents Al Jolson and Gail Patrick in The Jazz Singer with Ludwig Donath and Tamara Shane. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Here's a tip to housewives. How would you like to save real money on your food bills and help your country, too? Save all your used kitchen pets. Put them in a tin can and take them to your butcher. He'll pay you spot cash for every pound you bring in, and you'll receive more per pound than last year. Every drop you turn in helps to ease the worldwide shortage of fats and oils, a shortage that still is serious. Fats and oils are essential in the making of tires, soap, electric irons, dress materials, and hundreds of other necessary items. So when you save, you help yourself and everyone else, too. Remember, dealers now pay more for used pets than they did last year. Save and turn in your used kitchen pets. Get real cash in return. Van Heflin appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Fiesta with Esther Williams and an all-star cast. Heard in our play tonight were Francis Robinson as Dizzy, Victor Wood as Scotty, Valerie Cardew as Elena, and Tom Collins as Richard. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear The Jazz Singer with Al Jolson, Gail Patrick, Tamara Shane, and Ludwig Donat. Spry. When you bake and fry. Spry. For your cake and pie. Spry. Get your shortening by. Rely on Spry. Yes, it's Spry for pastry so tender, flaky, nut sweet, any pie filling tastes more delicious. You'll say pastry is extra delicate, better tasting with Spry. Rely on Spry. S P R Y. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Jazz Singer with Al Jolson, Gail Patrick, Ludwig Donoff, and Tamara Shane. And why not tune in to Joan Davis every Monday night over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>